Alright class, so this video is going to talk about how to simplify radicals when we're talking about fractions. Also, more specifically, we're going to talk about when the radicals are in the denominator. We don't ever want to see radicals in the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to call, do what we call rationalizing the denominator. So we're going to walk through some examples and if you don't get it by then, come in and see me for class. So to start, let's put up the problem. How about we write the square root of 9 divided by 16. So 9 divided by 16, that's all underneath the radical. It's all underneath it. So how do we work with this problem? Well, we work with it kind of like we would not work with multiplying two radicals. So I'm going to go off on a tangent right here, a problem that's not part of our original problem. When you have something like this, square root of 4 times 6, 4 is being multiplied by 6. When they're being multiplied, we simply break them apart into their own houses. So we break this apart into the square root of 4 and times it by the square root of 6. So the 4 and the 6, they now have their own houses. Well, multiplication in some ways is like division. So when we see 9 divided by 16 is all under one radical, it's the same thing as 4 times 6 under all one radical. We're going to give each number its own house. So this becomes square root of 9 divided by the square root of 16. The 9 has its own house, and the 16 has its own house. Okay. And now we can work from here. The square root of 9, do we know what that is? Yeah, that's a perfect square. That's just 3. Do we know what the square root of 16 is? Yeah, we know what that is too. That's 4. So our answer is 3 fourths. So if you want to check it, type in the square root of 9 divided by 16 and see if it equals 3 fourths or 0.75. But caution you, when you type it into your calculator, you must type the square root sign, 9 divided by 16, and then close off the parentheses. You have to close off the parentheses Otherwise, it may think that the divide by 16 is outside the radical when it's not. All right, so this is one example. When you're given a fraction under a radical, you can just split it into its own houses, just like when you multiply. Let's instead talk about when you have a radical in the denominator. So what would that look like? That looks something like this. 10 over the square root of 5. This radical in the denominator, this is bad form. We don't like seeing that. We like seeing them in the numerators, that's okay, but we don't like seeing them in the denominators. So what we do is what we call rationalizing the denominator. So all we do for that is we multiply by 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top by square root of 5 and the denominator by square root of 5. So it looks like this. So the top is multiplied by square root of 5 and the bottom is multiplied by square root of 5. Now what this is going to equal is 10 square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Notice, we have a pair right here, two square roots of 5. What does that mean? It means that it just becomes whatever the number is underneath the radical. So I'm going to write 10 square roots of 5. What the numerator was didn't touch it. And now, this pair right here, that's just going to reduce to 5, the number underneath the radical. All right, so here we have 10 square roots of 5 divided by 5. Now are you done? Not quite. Let's take out this fraction so we can see it a little bit better. We have 10 over 5 times the square root of 5. So I just brought out the fraction. All right. 10 divided by 5, what is that? It's 2, so we can simplify. So we say 2 square roots of 5. Now, can you simplify the square root, of, square root of 5 anymore? No, you can't. So this is your answer. So again, 
divide, take 10 divided by the square root of 5, see if it equals 2 times the square root of 5 in your calculator. It should. Okay. How about another example like that? Let us take 7 square roots of 3 divided by the square root of 11. So we see the radical, the square root, and the denominator. We want to get it out, out of the denominator. So we take the numerator and the denominator multiplied by square root of 11. We do it by the square root of 11, so that becomes not a radical anymore. You always do it by the denominator. So I'm going to take the numerator times the square root of 11, and the denominator times the square root of 11. So what I'll get is 7 square roots of 3 over times the, times the square root of 11. Sorry, I almost forgot that. And the denominator is the square root of 11 times the square root of 11. Notice, denominator is a pair, so it reduces to 11. This is the trick we always want to use. We always want to see it reduced to 11, or to reduce to a number, not a radical anymore. So this pair reduced to 11, and now we have 7 square roots of 3 times square root of 11. Now this problem, I don't want to see two different radicals. I want to see only one radical ever. All right. So what does that mean? We need to combine the square root of 3 and the square root of 11. We need to combine those into one radical. So what does that look like? We have 7. That's, that's not changing. We have the square root of 3 times 11. And we divide by 11. So 3 times 11 is 33. So underneath that radical is 33. And then we have 11. Now, I want to pull this number up over here for a quick second. So I'm just going to rewrite my problem. Are we finished? Is it simplified? That's the question I want to pose to you. To see, let's pull out that fraction. So 7 divided by 11, and then we have the square root of 33 beside it. Is 7 divided by 11 simplified? Yeah, it is. So this is your answer right here. Or this, whatever way you want to write it. It doesn't make a difference to me. But know that we pulled this out just to see if we can simplify our numbers. Okay. How about another example like that? So I'm going to go through this one kind of fast. Let us see. How about we take 3 square roots of 6? All right. So to get the square root of 6 out of the denominator, I'm going to times the top and the bottom by 6. Excuse me, by the square root of 6. So we have 3 square roots of 6 divided by 6. Square, square root of 6 times square root of 6. The square roots of 6. They just become the 6, what's underneath the radical. So I'm going to put a 6 down here. And now we have 3 square roots of 6. Let's look at this. Can we simplify our square root of 6? Well, we can say the square root of 6 equals 2 times 3 over 6. But we can't break up the 2, and we can't break up the 3. So what we're going to do, we're just going to leave it as this square root of 6 right here. So I'm going to erase that. So yeah, that radical is simplified as far as we can go. But now let's ask ourselves, are these numbers out in front simplified? Well, let's pull up the fraction and see. So 3 over 6, square root of 6. Can we simplify 3 and 6? Well, yeah, we can write 1 half instead. Because take 3 divided by 3, you get 1. Take 6 divided by 3, you get 2. And the square root of 6 just follows it down. So our answer, 1 half, square root of 6. If you need more help, come in and see me.